Hello beautifuls, this is Aromi here and welcome back to Seduce Me, the visual novel game. Last episode, we did a whole lot with Eric and I was like really tired so I'm, I'm terribly sorry if I sounded so more softer. I, I was insanely tired but now I'm not tired and it's not as late and recording as I did last episode. So let's actually get started. I think it's ending soon actually. So... My mind began to wander, imagining him saying yes. He would leave and the brothers would follow to bring him back. They'd be trapped because Diana would make sure that they could never leave. Eric would be the new lord with Diana as his queen, and I'd lose him. Sorry, but that actually doesn't sound appeasing at all. Ooh. No more sexy noises in the background. Or music. It sounded like, <laughs> like music, like sexual music in porn videos or something. Okay, I'm done. What? I felt surprise run down my body again. Did I hear Eric correctly? He denied her. You dare deny. Do not try to raise a tone to me. I am not as submissive as my training defines. I could see the ethereal tendrils slowly form around Eric, taunting and threatening to strike at Diana. You do not scare me. I can bring you to your knees and make you beg to return with me. Such a cute bluff. You don't have enough power to do that, do you? Or else you would have already done it. Ooh. Eric smirked before making the tendrils fade away. Diana gripped the sink beneath her as Eric turned to adjust the shower head nonchalantly. Besides, even if you did enthrall me, you wouldn't fully own me. I belong to her. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> the human girl? You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She is a human. You're a demon. I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would give away my position, but I was growing extremely tired of Diana. Vargin, I set her straight. I sat as to be assertive and quickly stepped in the room, opening a door to the bathroom wide open. Diana and Eric looked looked at me in surprise as they glared daggers at Diana. Get, oh, get out. Well, well, little human. You're awfully nosy in business that doesn't concern you. Don't care. Talking to my man, so you can't do that. Does it? I don't think a human would understand the importance of this affair. Oh, I quite do. You're asking him to leave, to be someone he doesn't want to be. That's not going to happen. Oh? And what makes you so sure about that? Because I love him. Because the other one is... He's not a slave, no. Diana stared in shock at my explanation. Was it not what she expected? I didn't care what she expected. I wasn't going to lose the man I had grown to love. You... love him? Yep. Yes. I love him. Diana's lip twitched, the edges curling into an amused smirk as she stared at me. So what? A human's love isn't enough to understand the situation. A demon can never reciprocate human feeling. <sighs> How would you know that, Diana? To both of our surprise, however, Eric stepped forward and put an arm around me, pulling me close to his body. I love her. Um. I saw the confidence Diana had shattered in her eyes as she stared at Eric at his words. I could see the struggle in her face and try, in her face to try and find some weakness in Eric, in me, anything. A demon love a human? Impossible. Not impossible. Do you remember when you said that, t when you told us a story about the mermaid and the prince? That happened. So it can happen to a human and a demon. Impossible? How utterly dim to think that. We are the masters of emotion. We aren't barred away from feeling love. In fact, we can experience it ten times more powerfully than humans. Oh. I love her with every single part of my being. However, I don't expect someone like you to understand love. Damn. Diana took a step back, physically feeling the sting of Eric's words in her chest. She had lost. I could see it in her eyes. 
Diana eyes grew dull as she glared at me and Eric. It seemed almost uncharacteristic of her, yet it, yet it was something I wasn't surprised to see come from her face. Very well. Fine. Vale. And with that, Diana faded into the ground into a purple pentagram, crossing her arms and almost looking upset. Eric and I were then left alone, left with the silence of the room. I finally let out the air I was unconsciously holding in my chest, relaxing from the ordeal. Eric stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. Are you okay, princess? <sighs> Never thought I would be that brave, but I'm good. I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately after being surprised. Eric let out a sigh. Relaxing in the embrace, I gently face, placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. I could hear Eric's heartbeat. He held me close in his arm, and I felt safe beyond words. My sweet princess, how you've captured my heart. Uh, boo-boo. <laughs> I don't even know how I did that. I looked up at Eric, wondering what he meant by what he said. Eric smiled down at me, moving a strand of my hair from my face to look down at me. I'm selfish, ignorant, and undeserving of everything you have done and given to me. The way you accept me and see through my mask astounds me beyond words. Oh my god. And now, you've captured my heart and claimed it as yours to probably the greatest adversary in the Abyssal Plains. You've made a demon fall in love with you. I've fallen in love with you and want to give you everything you deserve. I stared wide-eyed, blushing like a maniac. Was this real? No way. This couldn't be real. Was Eric confessing to me? Confessing his love for me? Eric gently smiled and caressed my cheek. The warmth of his hand invited me to nuzzle him into it and I closed my eyes. This wasn't a dream. My heart was pounding hard enough where I was sure Eric could hear it. Eric gently leaned in, closing his eyes. He stopped, however remaining just a mere torturous inch away from my lips. He wanted me to show my feelings for him. He had left himself open for me to kiss him or leave him empty. The power I had was unbelievable. Well, obviously kiss him. I loved him and I wanted to give him exactly what he wanted. I gently leaned in, letting my lips finally touch his gingerly touch touch his gingerly okay i was like what eric let out almost a pleasure purr against my lips before wrapping both of his arms around my waist pulling me close to him i moved my arms up and around his neck feeling the kiss between us deep into a heated height see we didn't get this with all the other guys so we so now i know when i do a whole rerun again to to actually step in my chest was pounding, making me feel safe, making, making me feel and see fireworks in my mind. Eric was everything I desired. He was the man I wanted, demon or not. It was all so supernatural, to fall in love with someone so quickly. <laughs> Maybe it was the sense of magic I was thrown into. Maybe it was Cupid playing with my heart. Either way, I found myself melting at the thought of him being with me. Um, personally speaking, I think everybody falls in love pretty quick. Just some people try to deny it longer than others. That's that's how I see love. Like, you you can legit fall in love with like first sight or something like that. Cause like I grew feelings for Tyler once I heard his voice. Cause like over the internet you don't really see the person. Cause you know people are like scared and stuff. So all my first impression of Tyler was his voice, and he sounded pretty damn hot. I don't know if he can hear me. He's right next to me. I found myself combing my fingers through Eric's hair, making the man holding me softly tremble at my th <laughs> at my touch. He gently nibbled on my oh, <laughs> what the hell? He gently nibbled. Uh, this 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 part it's, uh, it's kind of awkward reading out loud, especially since Tyler's like not that far away from me. So I, I hope he's not listening. Okay, anyways, he gently nibbled on my lower lip, asked me to deepen the kiss between us even further. I easily teased him before finally opening my mouth slightly for him. Okay. <laughs> his son gently danced with mine as one of his hands slid up my back and cradled my head. He gently leaned my body back, making me cling to him as the heat of our kiss rose higher and higher. Gently, though, Eric slowed the kiss down and pulled away, staring down at me. 
His eyes burned for me, wanting me to melt and buckle in his arms. I could feel myself melt already. Eric opened his mouth to speak, but as a very small blush ran, ran along his cheeks, he was reduced to shy silence. I stared as he tried to find the words to say in my eyes. I knew exactly what he wanted. He didn't need energy, though, right? Are you... No, I just... I stared wide-eyed, feeling a blush on my cheeks grow. He didn't say anything more, but I knew what words would have followed if he continued. He wanted me. I was stunned. Was it that appealing to him? Was his passion really that deep for me? Eric gently nuzzled my forehead, losing the blush and finally being able to speak, a small chuckle escaping his lips. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I do have to shower after all, and you need your rest. Oh god, why did you tell me you had to shower? And now instantly she will have images of him. Naked. <laughs> I could feel my mind go numb and purr at the idea. A mom with an incubus. He was a demon of sex, and the purest form of lust and desire. My road would rock, and I would enjoy every second of it. At the same time, I was indeed inexperienced. Diana wasn't wrong when she claimed me to be innocent. Did I want to give that innocence to him? Especially this early? I found myself forgetting the words yes and no. What could I say to him? I knew that when I want I, I knew then what I wanted, but how to say it wasn't breaking the moment. Ah oh, the line, the title, seduce me. I couldn't believe the two words that came out of my mouth. It made the most sense to tell him yes. I needed him. I wanted him. Those two words must have made something in him finally break. Eric simply ran his finger at- Oh my god, do I have to read this? <laughs> is, is Fifty Shades of Grey worse than this? Because honestly, I don't know. Eric simply ran his fingers down his vest and shirt, releasing the buttons and revealing his bare chest to me. I couldn't help but move one of my hands down his chest, running my fingers over the crevices of his muscles. Of course, muscles. A pleasure, a pleasure purr escaped his throat, making me shiver slightly. Eric let his vest and shirt slide down from his arms to the floor before cradling my head in his hands and kissing me deeply. I felt heat rise in my body, making me undo the tie underneath my collar and release the buttons on my own shirt. I would join him for a shower, then we would head to bed together. Quickly I removed my shirt and vest, making Eric stop kissing me and stare in slightly surprised. I was simply in a brawl, but I could feel a blush invade my cheeks. My shy side began to fester in my mind. D did I really want this? To undress before a demon. No, this was the man I loved, and yet I felt my innocence drape over me in almost shame. As if he knew, Eric gently caressed my cheek, smiling at me before kissing each cheek and whispering in my ear. You're beautiful. Um, thank you. <laughs> the two words broke my limitation. I gave in. I yielded to my desires. Ooh la la. <laughs> Before I knew it, he and I were both stripped of clothing. That word, the word strip, just, I don't know if I'm childish or what, but every time I see the word strip, it just makes me all, all giddy and giggly. <laughs> and in a very nice warm shower together, the heat between our bodies simply added to the warmth, making the shower a very steamy one. So this is how we could unlock the fourth image. And she told me the very last like, if you got the super happy ending, you unlock another image. So, this is how we get it. Cool. Cool. I just gotta deal with the three other guys before me. Eric pulled me close, knowing that, I, knowing I was still shy, and began to kiss my lips over and over. Each kiss with his promise to keep me safe, keep me comfortable, love me. I kept my arms wrapped around Eric, taking each kiss he gave and giving him my own kisses in return. I didn't know if it was the fact we were both naked, or maybe I just craved his touch. But I didn't want to let him go. The water ran over our body, cleansing our skin as we held on to each other, like it was the end of the world. Even when Eric started to actually wash his body and mine, our bodies constantly touched. The fragrance of the soap engraved itself into my memory as I let him touch me and cling. He was gentle and sweet, making sure to be attentive to every part of me. However, as he held me, I could slightly feel the shiver of his hands. He was nervous. Was I his first? He wasn't going to show it. He wanted me to enjoy the moment, but was afraid of screwing up. 
The shivering hand showed me his emotions perfectly. Is it really his first? Um, his fake persona. I wouldn't think it would be his first. Then my mind quickly made a realization. Were we really going to join in the shower? I had imagined my first to be in a bed. At least she knows what she imagined. I mean, I eventually pulled away from him after the last bit of soap was rinsed away from my skin. He looked to me worried, but I smiled. Mm, not here. Eric stared for a brief moment before slightly smirking and nodding, gathering me back into his arms and kissing me. I felt warm magic gather around our bodies as the slight pattern of the running water vanished. I slightly opened my eyes to see that Eric and I were no longer in the shower. But in my bedroom, what the hell happened? Or were we like, poof? We were both dry, but the heat and passion remained. Eric guided me to the bed as a purple tendril made sure my body, made sure my door was closed and locked. As he laid me down, note over me, Eric smiled and finally embraced me as we both desired. The pleasure between us would be heavenly and we'd go through it together. I closed my eyes and gave myself to Eric. My body, my mind, my soul. It all belonged to him as he held me. His body, his mind, his soul. It all belonged to me as I gave into his embrace. His kisses and fingers over my skin would forever engrave themselves into my memory as our passion rose through incredible heights. Oh, lots of reading because he's not talking at all. <laughs> Sorry, I had to drink some water. Our breaths and moans to each other equally sounded and echoed like a blissful chant we never wished to end. We kept moving, loving, feeling, feeling every inch of our bodies until we had enough, and I was enveloped in his embrace. Skin to skin, heartbeats matching. We held each other in the glow of the aftermath. I nuzzled my head under Eric's chin as he held me close. I love you so much. Oh my god. Kill her. I love you too. Just to hear those words come from Eric's mouth made my heart flutter. To hear me answer made my soul warm and glee. I could feel both of us sink into a peaceful sleep together. It was the best sleep I had in days. And I was happy. I had love and I had... I had love and I had my happiness. My life was simply perfect. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring into Eric's bare chest. I blushed but looked up to see Eric still sleeping. His sleeping face made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it. I was lying next to a man I had grown to love with all of my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe, and as our, heart, as our he heated dance replayed in my head, I couldn't help but smile and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, giving me more of his warmth. I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened and made me sit up, without making the without waking the man next to me. I felt my legs move and bring me to the balcony window, where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio. With the help? I stared wide eyed at Diana, who sat across legged on the railing of my balcony with her glowing red eyes stare upon me. I opened my mouth to object, but Diana stopped me. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. By the way, how was it exactly? Demons are the best lovers, after all. I glared. What do you want, Diana? Well, I just wanted to see how you truly feel. You know, without him around to influence you. What are you talking about? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean about these feelings of yours, and to give you your salvation. What was Diana up to? This was beyond crazy. Nothing she, nothing she had done made sense. Why was I still alive at this rate? What's keeping you from just killing me and taking them? <laughs> you are not worth my time. Oh, okay. Not worth your time? What are you? Afraid, of, afraid something might happen? All at once, I felt my body being lifted into the air, moved over past the railings, leaving me without nothing but the ground below to threaten me with a collision death. Oh, trust me, dear. I'm not afraid to kill you. I can drop you right now and leave your body to rot until the morning, when the boys would find you. Wouldn't they hear my collision? 
I want to speak the thought of her letting go and letting me fall to my death scared my voice into silence. Diana then chuckled and wheeled my body back to the balcony, setting me down gently. Alas, if I kill you, then the boys would never come with me willingly back to the demon world, and then I'd have to chase them all around the world, or kill them and drag them back, but then their father wouldn't be happy and blah blah blah. Too much work. Diana seemed very business oriented, as if the boys were cargo more than men. It irked me, but she then smiled. I'm giving you one chance to denounce your love for the demon in your bed, and let me take him and the other boys back to the demon world. Uh, no thanks. And why, may I ask, would I do that? There are so many reasons why, actually. There's the reason that he's a demon and you're a human, so you two can never truly have a happily ever after. Then there's the reason that demons truly do not know how to love, despite what he may proclaim. The list goes on and on. But you can always teach someone to do something. The point is, if you give me the boys, I will promise you eternal happiness. How, when you're taking my eternal happiness? Eternal happiness? That's right. I have the power to give you anything you desire. Power. Men. Women. Money. Fame. Name it, and it's yours. A demon never goes back on their word, and I have the power to obtain anything you wish. Our deal is our contract. I could only stare in shock. This was a dream, and it had to be. However, Diana smiled an almost genuine smile at me, shaking me to the reality of the situation. She would never smile like that. Don't you wish to be free of your destiny? Your father constantly berating you to become the next CEO of your grandfather's company. How, how did you know? Well, she didn't say no, but I wanted to say no. <laughs> I was almost forward and surprised. How did Diana know all this? Was she a succubus? She was a succubus, yes. But how could she know anything beyond sexual desire? She wasn't Damien. Diana chuckled and leaned back against her arm. Just because I play with hearts and sex doesn't mean I don't know my way around the human mind. You happen to be an open book of information, but I digress. I can give you your freedom with ease. It'll be like you were always meant to have it. All I ask is that you hand over the boys. What do you say? Um, I say no. Was I seriously being given this choice? The men I loved were anything I wanted. A demon like Diana was powerful enough, yes. But did I even want to consider giving up the men I loved? Hell no. She must have been crazier than I thought. I glared. Absolutely not. Diana sighed and stood up onto the railing. What I was ex what I wasn't expecting was her lifting me into the air. I tried to scream, but my voice suddenly became locked in silence. What was Diana doing? Diana made me float over to her, and she smirked as we touched noses. Well, if I can't return home with the boys, I might as well return home with the power to fight back. Oh. What the hell? Diana finally leaned in and kissed me. I shut my eyes, feeling the need to bite her lips, but finding no muscle in my face, listening to my mental commands. What did she do to me? I didn't want to enjoy it, but okay. I already, I already read all the shiz. May you never regret your choice, human. If you do, I'll happily come and take it away. Nope. With a flick of her hair, Diana turned and walked away into the night, fading into the darkness like a shadow. I watched her fade away before looking back to the man on my bed. Did I make the right choice? My heart gave a gentle thump, giving me my answer. I did. And I will never regret it for as long as I live. I walked back inside and gently crawled back into bed with the embrace of the safest arms I knew. I snuggled close to the warmth before closing my eyes. I was happy. Did I not get the happy <laughs> ending? One thing was for certain, however, Eric loved me and loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other and nothing was going to take that away from us. Not even time itself. Our love was so powerful. It practically overwhelmed me with joy every time I found him holding me close every morning. 
To think, a demon in love with a human like me. It was unthinkable, unbelievable. It was practically impossible. But it was true. Well, maybe I did get it. Okay, this is when everybody, she tells every, about everybody. One evening, a good couple of years after the boy and I had met, after the boys and I had met, I had a moment to myself, so I wandered my house and took in all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons and the devils and magic, it was surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could have been all a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hands to my chest, rel relishing in the feelings dancing within my soul. I let a happy sigh before looking up and seeing where I had wandered to. I was standing at the entrance to the backyard, and the door was slightly ajar. I peeked out to see Eric standing out by the gazebo, looking up at the moon in the sky. I slowly opened the door and exited the house, walking towards the man who held my heart. Hearing the grass beneath my feet, Eric turned his head and smiled at me. <laughs> Good evening, princess. I did get the ending, I think. I smiled and blushed a bit, moving to stand at Eric's side. What are you doing out here? Ah, uh, I'm merely making friends with the moon, my love. Oh, you're cheating on me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I blushed deeper, hearing him call me with love, made my heart skip a beat. Eric chuckled, most likely being able to see the blush through the darkness of the night. I wanted to see the night sky. The yard is one of the more perfect places to stargaze, don't you agree? Yeah. I found myself staring up at the sky as well. The star, stars all glimmered in the dark blue, almost pitch black sky. They all seemed to cast an entrancing spell on my eyes, not letting me look away, not that I cared anyway. Eric gently wrapped an arm around my waist, pulling me close to him without breaking my stare at the sky. I don't deserve you, you know. Uh, yes you do. <laughs> I raised an eyebrow and looked to Eric, confused. What did he mean? Eric simply stared at the sky, holding me gently to him. You're much too wonderful to be loving a demon such as myself. As cliche as it may be, the beauty fell in love with a beast. A beast with an insatiable hunger for lust. But you're not a beast, Eric. Eric looked down at me in slight surprise. I turned my body to him and gently held his cheek in my hand feeling him nuzzle gently into it and cradle it with his own hand. And you're not a beast, nor will you ever be. You're Eric, and you're the man I want to love for the rest of my life. Demon or not, I love you. Eric stared, looking lost at what, what to say at my words. It was all true, though. He had thoughts, sure, but who didn't? I enjoy his company and adore every part of his personality. The mask he wears will slowly fade over time. Or maybe not. After all, his mask is a part of who I fell in love with. Eric gently moved his head, head, not hand, and kissed my palm, closing his eyes and absorbing what I had said. He gently opened his eyes, partially staring past my hand. Sometimes I forget that you're human. You entrance me better than any demon could. You're truly unbelievable. Are you real or am I dreaming? <laughs> Same question I'm asking myself. Yes, Eric. I'm real. I'm right here. Eric finally looked to me, a look of desperate need in his eyes. You're not dreaming. I gently guided Eric's face down with my hand and kissed him softly, reminding him of my touch and reaffirming my words. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Eric gently pulled me to him, facing me to hug, hug me to his chest. I nuzzled into Eric's chest, hearing his gentle heartbeat and memorizing its tempo. You'll regret it, I promise you. You'll regret loving someone like me. Oh, no, not regretting it so far. <laughs> you underestimate me. Eric chuckled softly, the sound of his laughter sending happy waves down my spine. Eric smiled down at me and kissed the top of my head. My focus, however, traveled down to my hand, which had been had become gently held by Eric's. 
His thumb grazed over my ring finger, where I could feel soft veins of energy tingle my skin. I watched as I... I watched as around my finger, a small vine wrapped itself around and tied itself into a lovely ring. The ring held a beautiful purple flower with a red gem in the middle, glistening in the moonlight. I gasped before looking up to Eric, who slightly sparked down at me. See? I'm taking advantage of you already. Did you propose to me or something? <laughs> what just happened? Eric... Eric gently moved his hand and cradled my cheek, replacing the spark on his face with a tender smile that made my heart skip a beat. I don't know what I did to deserve you, but I swear to love you till the end of days and beyond. You make me feel so complete. I can no longer imagine what I would do in life without you. Oh, that's too cute. Let me stay with you. I love you so much. Oh my god. I felt my heart going a million miles an hour. Was this truly happening? Yes, it was. I felt it. I knew it. Aw, the last picture! This is how we get the super ending! Out of pure happiness, I wrapped my arms around Eric and kissed him deeply. Eric stared before holding me... Oh, stared before holding me to him and kissing deeply back, pouring all of his love to me into that kiss. I did the same for him. Not wanting to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this man in my arms. There's no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high, <laughs> high, <laughs> all at once. Here I was, kissing a man I would be with forever, under the beautiful night light. <laughs> night light, oh my god, beautiful moonlight of the night. I had gained the heart of a demon. No. Of a man I loved. I vowed to cherish him and love him for the remainder of my days and beyond. Could Damon love, human for love a human forever? I knew Eric would. And that was my happily ever after. And Eric's kiss are nice. Eh? Yep! I got the super ending happily ever after. I don't know if there's, there's copyright in the trailer. So, <laughs> skipping that, I don't know if there was copyright, if there wasn't, oops, but, uh, I'm so happy, gallery, Eric, yep, we unlocked all of the pictures, beautiful, so the last guy is James, James here, hello James, and then we're gonna go back to all the other guys. I wasn't as, um, my feelings weren't as attached to Eric. But I guess because, <laughs> I mean, I already read all these other guys. But he didn't really attract my heart. Like, he, he, I don't, I don't know. Like, he seems to be a Casanova. Like, he knows the right things to say. So I guess, like, I kind of ignore that because... I guess I'm not into guys that are like that, knowing the right things to melt a girl's heart. Because it's like you used it on so many people. So, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work on me, boo-boo. Nope. Mm-mm. <laughs> Andrew. He had more than, I don't know how to get his other pictures. Because he never comes back, so. Unless we run into him when we go out with uh, Naomi and Suzu. Because... I haven't interacted with them a whole lot. But 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 we're here for the guys. It's not really about them right now. Or ever. <laughs> I'm probably going to unlock their stuff. But I won't record that. So next episode will be about James. And we will know how to co co get the correct ending. So. Oh, I got hiccups. So. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm still obsessed with this game. The voice acting is incredible. Like, really incredible. Composer? Whoever... The composer is amazing, yo. I loved all the music in there. Oh, voice actors. Wow. This is a lot. Pickle. Samantha Chan. I never knew Diana was uh, the creator. I was like, 
wait because i went to her her channel and then i heard her uh, little voice clip and i was like oh it's her but now now we know everybody damien jonah scott man he he needs to be proud because i like his voice his killer voice man <laughs> that that's why i picked damien first and sam I, I think I'm gonna do when I do the recap. I'm probably gonna do Matthew, Sam, and then Damien. Damien could be the last one. So it's like a happily ever after of the ending of the series. <sighs> it's gonna be quite sad that it's ending, but this game is is awesome. So, anyways, I'm gonna cut it because it's probably past 30 minutes. So thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys next time.